All right, Battletech fans, we're back with yet another edition of Battle Talk, and this time my special guest is Mr. Dwayne Morash. So say hello. Hello. And we just had a real interesting interaction, uh, the two of us did, where I found out that you had redesigned some Alpha Strike cards, or whether they were Alpha Strike cards or Quick Start Rules cards, I'm not sure. We're going to talk about that here in just a second, but you made this really awesome design, and I'm going to throw it up on the screen here for you in just a little bit so y'all can see what that looks like. But what I want to start out with is, how did you get involved with Battletech? Well, um, this goes back a long time. We're talking uh, the 80s. Um, oh boy, so all right. We love a little hours time warp thing going on. Right. Um, yeah, so I um, I stumbled on Battletech um, because I thought it looked like Robotech. And, okay, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so for me, I bought this box set from my local shop in a small town. Um, and I took it home expecting a role playing game. <laughs> and I opened it up. I had a bunch of this, and you guys think this is the '80s where miniature gaming wasn't really in full swing. And what I got was a cardboard map with a bunch of card tokens for different mecha uh, that looked familiar, um, and then a bunch of sheets that had like heat tracking points and stuff on it. And this was not a role playing game. <laughs> this was this was <laughs> from what I intended to buy. And so I tried to get my head wrapped around it, but then later learned that this was just the wrong product, but somehow it had been intertwined with my Robotech uh, sure. peanut butter. So peanut butter and whatever, all got mixed up together and chocolate. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and then I shelved it for the better part of my entire life, um, but keeping an eye in the rear view mirror because sure. I knew it was a thing, yep. um, but just, it kind of was weird for me. But then as I uh, as I progressed in years, I sort of realized that the, the lawsuits and all that stuff, and um, and then I think I jumped into it when WizKids was doing the the blind packs, the the WizKids oh. MechWarrior. Yeah, the was... MechWarrior Dark Age stuff. Yeah, yeah. So I got into it then, but didn't play it. But I, I appreciated the the sculpts and were a lot different than what I was used to at that point. So I knew then, you know, okay, this is a different beast. And then uh, just keeping an eye on it until most recently when I said, you know what, I think my brain has matured enough to the point where I can understand the rules. And the mechs looked cool enough now and made the plunge. That's awesome. And and the thing that kind of brings us here today is like I was just saying a second ago, these alpha strike cards or quick start rule cards. When you designed these, what were you going for? Um, so for me, I, I am a veteran of tabletop and role play, but um, I have a large appreciation for um, the immersion of these games. Sure. And I, th I think the communities that surround them sometimes, I won't say all to offend people, but I think they move away from the immersion factor and more focus on the meta, um, the, the tactics and the in-game kind of stuff. That's fair. And for me, I said, you know, if I'm going to get into this game, I want to embrace the lore and the feel. So I said, I'm going to make these cards um, sort of, you know, putting focus on the pilot. Um, stripping down the basics, but giving it a visual flair that would draw the player into the universe. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I love it. Like, I, I ask anybody that's talked to me for 10 minutes, they'll tell you. It's it's the the people and the stories and the, the story of the ordinary guy doing the extraordinary things that, that make Battletech great. And it's that whole world that you can just jump into that sandbox and play it. Yeah, I'm a big Top Gun fan from the 80s. Um, so for me, the concept of having a pilot, because, you know, when you look at the table, it, it may as well just be giant robots fighting. Right. Um, right. So for me, I wanted to sort of inject, I know the rules don't accommodate for a lot of that, but I wanted to inject something at the tabletop level that made you realize that, hey, there's a pilot inside this thing. So when you made this stuff, was it based on anything else? Like I say, was it based on Alpha Strike? Was it based on the Quick Start rules? Or did this something just come out of your head and you were like, I want to make this and that's how I'm going to do it and there was no outside influence? Um, well, a couple things. One, um, a lot of the times when I buy into tabletop games, I immediately look at look at ways that I can iterate and, um, and sort of, I won't say fix, but iterate on um, the onboarding process for new players. Um, because I have a young son that I teach these games to, and um, my circle basically involves teaching people um, how to play games. So for me, um, having that visual aesthetic to make it easy and breaking it down into simple, easy to read. Um, sure. A lot of games don't do that. A lot of a lot of uh, published games don't have very good onboarding. Yep. So that's they sort of kind of just throw you in there. 
Yeah, and, and so the influence, just to answer that part of the question, is my son has been playing a lot of uh, the game Titanfall. Okay. And uh, Titanfall put it put a very strong emphasis on the pilot. Yep. And I wanted to bring that to the game so that when I introduced it to my son, he had a, a parallel kind of comparison. See, and the, the most interesting thing that I took away from that post that you had made, I can't remember if it was Classic Battletech or Battletech International, it was one of them, uh, is the people that came in were like, well, you missed this and you missed that and you missed this. And me, I've been playing for 26 years. When I see that kind of stuff, I just go, y'all, y'all. Like, can't you just say it's cool and move on if you think it's yeah. missing something or whatever. But then it, it hit me, I was like, but what if this is a riff on the quick start rules? Or what if this is a riff on alpha strike cards? And it, it to this day, flabbergasts me <laughs> how many people don't know the quick start rules exist. Yeah. And I'm just like, no wonder y'all can't find nobody to play a game with you because what you're talking about here is, is getting new players into the game. And I love it. Like, I'm totally here for it. But there's so many people that are kind of set in that, eh, you know, it's, it's, it's this way or it's the highway. And that's going to keep those people out. And I really feel like you're doing yourself a disservice, really, when you're doing that. And yeah, so I saw these things and I was like, oh, this is amazing. Yeah, I think that's the, um, the, the go-to tends to be um, it's not right, or you got to do this, you got to do that. And there's this, this box that they live in um, that they feel like, okay, I can't, I can't step outside that boundary because somebody at Catalyst Games is going to come and smack me side the head, right? Right. But then you made a real interesting comment, which totally like blew me away. I was like, oh man, this is awesome. You talked about how you were using these cards and these new kind of uh, record sheet designs that you had made to help teach the game to special needs kids and to kind of help them along with other basic things. So I want to talk about that. How does that whole process work? So I have a, uh, I don't want to call it a side hustle, but it's my main hustle. Sure. Um, so I, I run a business uh, and it's called Maverick Games Learning and Support. And that business um, basically was born out of my uh, career choice path of becoming a special education teacher. Oh, all right. And I left the established school system uh, because I didn't see that my skills were being put to the best use in that environment. Yeah. Um, and here in Canada, we have a lot of struggles with um, how best to support special needs kids in the school system. Yeah. Um, so I created my own business called Maverick Games. And the premise and the um, sort of the, the philosophy is that I teach kids um, academics, I support their social needs, and I do it all through the love of gaming. So, yeah, so I basically have various programs that I run during um, during the week that involve either uh, role-playing games, um, sure. tabletop games, like miniature-based gaming, and I also do video games. Um, but I tailor them to the specific needs, so it's academic, and math and numeracy that I focus in on that aspect of the game, right? And one of the things I've, I've said, I don't mean to cut you off, is uh, back in the day when I was a kid, teachers would try to teach me math and this and that, and they'd have worksheets and things. And for whatever reason, my brain just went, I, I hate this, I don't like it, it made my skin crawl. But when Battletech came into my life at 13 years old, I found that I have an interest now in learning how to do this math, but not only learn how to do it, but learn how to do it like that, so that I could you know, play the game better, play the game faster and do what I needed to do. And that is a, is a skill that I have taken into the rest of my life. And people are like, you're so good with numbers. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm really not. <laughs> it's battle tech. <laughs> Only because when you're being taught math in, in school, they tell you that it's going to be important. They say, don't worry. You're going to need to know this. But yeah. at the moment you're learning it, it doesn't serve a purpose. Sure. It's just, it's just there. When you take gaming, it's, hey, I better learn this math. I want to learn this math. If I learn this math, I'll be able to play this game better. Yes. Right? So, and that's sort of that. So I, I do that. And one of the key elements of teaching is um, taking the tools that I have and deciding how I'm going to introduce them, how I'm going to teach them. So if a game that I have doesn't do a good job in that, typically what I've done is I've retrofitted the games. And I do this with all the games that I buy um, to a point where I can onboard players um, easier. So whether that be Battletech, Star Wars Legion, um, Marvel Crisis Protocol, any number of tabletop miniature games I've done that with. Um, and yeah, so that's just sort of what I do by default when I crack open a new box. See, and 
to me, that just seems like such a match made in heaven because you have kids who are already interested in this stuff anyway. I mean, who doesn't love Spider-Man when you're 12 years old? And you you throw this stuff down in front of them and say, now listen, you can be Spider-Man, but you got to learn how to get there. And we were just saying, and that's such a wonderful way of saying it too, that you get taught these things, but you don't have a use for them at the time. I was today years old when I started thinking like that because I never thought about why did I hate it? I just, I hated it. And if you put something like that, that anybody, you know, any, uh, you know, child, regardless of gender, can identify with and say, well, you can be Wonder Woman or you can be Superman or whatever, or you can jump inside this giant stompy robot. Like it immediately provides a, wait, what? Okay, hold on. Now I might actually have to use this. And once you get people into it, it's like, well, you, you end up wanting to. And it's like, when I was a kid, that was my biggest thing is nobody would ever come to me on my level and teach me something in a way that made me actually be interested in it. I was always good at grammar and I was always good at English, but like when it came to like science and math, <laughs> I got nothing. You didn't have a, um, a reason to want to learn it really at that point. So and it, it's kind of a thing. I mean, um, the, the biggest thing for me is that the gaming, uh, gaming for me, um, it carried me through my younger years um, and they developed my skills subtly. So the idea is that I can teach these kids um, the way they want to learn. But, you know, on the down low, they're learning math, reading, um, social skills. It's kind of like a sly way to, hey, you know, and we yeah. we often have at my table here in, in Tulsa uh, in the past, we've had a lot of folks that, you know, are on that were special needs kids when they were kids and now they're just special needs adults, but they come to the table and they go, I can do this. And nobody here is going to judge me for being, you know, the way I am, whatever that is. And they can say, I feel empowered. Like they're piloting a giant stompy robot or they're playing, you know, a giant barbarian or an elf or whatever it is that they want to do. And I don't really have to play to get a, a, a bit of satisfaction out of that. Because when I see them having fun at my table, I'm going, we, we've done what we came here to do. And so many people, I feel like, lose sight of that. They're just like, well, you know, why won't anybody come play games with me? Well, have you ever stopped to think about maybe you don't make it easy to do that? Or you don't give them an easy way to get their foot in the door to do that? Or when they do show up, it's this or nothing. And you, never, you don't stop to think that everybody learns differently. Yeah. And the, the further that point, what crushes that, and this happened more in the 80s than it does now, but what crushes that when you have um, educators or even parents in some degrees come to your child and say, stop doing that. That's yes! Not, that's, that's not important. You need to learn it like this. Stop playing those stupid games. Yes. Uh, God, so that I, happened to me so much. I, yeah, I mean, I let my son, I let my son play video games, not because I'm lazy, but when I watch him playing, he's reading menus. He's adding up his experience points that he gets for playing Fortnite to see how much he needs for the next level. He's understanding economics by realizing that it costs $10 to buy a thousand V-Bucks. Sure. So I let him play because I know on the down low, he's learning. But I think a lot of educators just immediately say, if you don't learn it this way, you're wasting your time. So stop doing that. It's a waste of your time. Sure. And that's, that's sort of what crushes that. And well, they they also uh, tend to come down very ham fisted about it. Uh, when I was growing up, uh, I was raised by my nan and grandpa. Nothing against them; they were just you know born in a different generation. And when I was growing up, you nailed it like right there, where it was all about you. You got to stop looking at the funny books, comic books, or you got to stop you know paying attention to this or paying attention to that because this is distracting you from your studies. That was the the big thing, and they were all about you know academics at that point. And I think some folks, anyway, their heart's in the right place, but at the same time, they're kind of you know tunnel visioned, and they can't see that. Well, if you allow your child to learn in different ways or embrace perhaps different ways of learning things yourself, then you will enrich their lives, and you will enrich your life because you're doing something. And you can do this with them. There was a guy a while back that had proposed something similar, and I, I wish I could find him again, but yeah, you, you could do this with them. So my next question that I want to ask you is, have you had a lot of success in generating interest uh, amongst these kids in Battletech? Yeah, so right now, the um, um, 
the tabletop uh, portion of my business is kind of in kind of um, limbo, only because um, up here in Canada, we still have a lot of people who are adverse to doing in-person events. Um, within the tabletop community, it's starting to get a little bit better. Um, but I think with the school kids, who I target mainly, is there's still a little bit of a hesitancy on the parents' part. Okay. Um, so what I'm basically doing is I'm laying the groundwork now um, in anticipation, right? Um, okay. I did conduct a pre-COVID um, uh, Star Wars Legion tabletop session as a sort of a, a primer. And it was it, it went over well, thankfully, because I was able to retrofit some of the onboarding. Okay. But out of the box, I think a lot of these, and, and rightly so, they shouldn't be worried about it. But I think a lot of these um, games don't cater to the lowest common denominator. Not to say that children with special needs are the lowest common denominator, but they don't, they just sort of pick a spot in the middle and that's where they aim, you know? Sure. And they don't have the ability to sort of go in and, and have an onboarding to each level of expertise, right? Right. Um, so really to answer your question, I'm just kind of laying the groundwork now. Um, that's why you looked on the Facebook group, I built a custom board. Um, and that was more from a marketing effort so that when I did get ready to put this down in front of kids, it would be branded and it would look proper. That's pretty sweet. I mean, the the you're talking about your business model, you know, being helping new players get onboarded and things like that. So what I want to ask is, what advice would you give to current Battletech players who are struggling, who are going, I, I'm really just trying to get new people involved, but I seem to be having trouble doing it. What would be your advice to them? Right, and is that, so you're not saying from players trying to understand it, but from players trying, trying to get other players into it. Yes, trying to be, it doesn't, all ages, you just, you're trying to get new people in. I've got my own ways, but I don't want to, I don't want to talk about that. I want to see, you know, what you got. Yeah, so I, I do get a lot of local players that I do see trying to do demo nights and, and demo games and stuff and tournaments and stuff, right? Sure. Um, I think for me, and I can only speak for myself, what drew me into miniature gaming as a hobby, and I would probably think this is a lot of people. In fact, when I, when I show kids my painted figures, and when I show them my terrain, sure. it's not that my it's not that my painting skills is what draws attention, but what they see when they walk in is first, besides the rules and the lore, they look at this table and they go, Wow. And, and Colorful. That's what, yeah, well that's what drew me into Warhammer. I walked into a shop and I saw I saw these painted figures of trees and stuff, and then and then the person told me, Did you know this is a game? And I'm like, wait a minute, I can play with this? I don't just get yeah. to look at it. Um, so I think presentation is a huge part. And I think like, for example, what I did with the cards, you know, like in my perfect sure. world, I would have my table that I built with the branding. I would have my trees and my terrain. I would have my painted figures and I would have these beautiful cards. And for me, I would, I would lead with that as opposed to, um, trying to get them into the playing of the game. Um, if you've captured their interest in the world and the look and the aesthetics, then it's an easy slide and do here take some dice uh this thing here can move a little bit um sure. move it by spaces and let's do it, do it at a really base level um you know sneak it in that way uh, but you really got to lead with the aesthetics first and i think that's why i do those cards is because if you're going to put something in front of someone don't start with the default battle tech mech sheet sure because that will just freak them out right well, I, I used to uh, use Alpha Strike all the time to teach new players. I still think it's a great way to get, you know, new players in because you have that little small card and they're not being information overload. Yeah. I'll give you an example. Um, uh, it's a different game, mind you, but again, going back to the aesthetics part. So um, uh, a game called Marvel Champions, it's a card game. Okay. And um, it shipped with all the cards and it even had an instruction book that showed you where to put the cards on the table. Um, so then I went and I made an 11 by 17 placemat out of cardstock with graphics and images where you put the cards. I splashed in some comic book art to make it look cool. And it was all laid out so that a new player could come and read where they put their cards. And it, it was okay, receptive by the community. But again, a lot of people didn't get what I was going for, right? Sure. So for me, for my next step in Battletech is to take that concept and I'm going to be creating an 11 by 17 placemat that outlines the steps of the game with, the, you know, that little card you get with Alpha Strike that says each round what you do? Yeah. 
Yeah, well, I'm going to enlarge that essentially, but create a more visual, aesthetically pleasing look with the logo and everything so that the players can look on the table and go, oh, move. And then they'll have pictures to go with it, right? I'm, I'm over here pumping my fist so hard because I, I made a video series about this, and you are saying one of the same things <laughs> I've said. It's, it's all about the human minds are attracted to this colorful battlefield, and if you can make it visually pleasing from across the room, people are just going to be drawn to that. They're going to come up and look at it and be like, what's all this? And you don't have to be the best painter in the world. God knows I'll never judge anybody for, you know, whatever they paint, but the fact that you did it and, and you can see that. And let me look at this and they look at it up close. Not only that, that somebody will be like, they're holding this miniature and they'll go, wow, you painted this. And yeah. that makes you feel good. Yeah. I mean, honestly, if I could take it to this level, I would, but I swear to God, if catalyst could include a neuro helmet in each box and you put it on the kid and you say you can't play Battletech unless you're wearing this neuro helmet. Um <laughs> because, so cool. Because they're immersed in the game now, right? Yeah. All right, yeah. Ray, get on that. <laughs> yeah. And it just makes you feel like, yeah, you're playing a game, but but you just up the fun factor and and you know, and that's so my advice, I guess, to answer the question would be um stop looking at the game as a set of rules when you're trying to onboard new people and get people attracted and focus on maybe what might get them attracted. Uh, the terrain, put some effort into building. Um, the game box comes with the card or the paper map. Honestly, and I'm not slighting anybody, but if you're introducing somebody to Battletech and that's how you're introducing the game to them is with that paper map, you need to stop right there and go back to the drawing board and get something better. Cause that will not, that in itself won't attract new players. See, what, I, what I've often said is if this is all you have right now and you're just itching to get out there and throw some dice, okay, like that's cool in the gang. I have always said, just make the best possible setup that you can make with what you have. And over time, I agree with you, you know, try to try to get new things. And if you're not a builder, because I'm not, I'm no good at that. The terrain that I have was made by other people, but... There's so many options now. Like you can go to Aries Games and Miniatures and pick up some of their hex tech uh, stuff. One of our uh, featured players out in St. Louis uh, painted up an entire like pump station and man, it looked so cool. It was a great look. And even if you sat that on the table and you didn't paint it yet, from a distance, it still looks really cool. And they're, oh, what are we doing over here? It, it makes it a lot more easy for somebody to gravitate toward it. Or, or work with your shop owners who have established terrain and stuff. Sure. Most cool. of them are all cool with letting you use it as long as you don't abuse it and put it back when you're done with it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's how it is at uh, one of our local game spots, Top Deck. Uh, they don't use anything you want, just as long as you're cool about it and put it back where you found it when you're done. They don't care. It's the the scale of their stuff though is all Warhammer 40k, so I can't use it for BattleTech, but I have my own stuff, so I mean it works. So let me ask you this personally: How does what you're doing affect your life? Um, so are you talking about from a schedule point of view? No, more like, uh, how does it make you feel? Uh, what are some good things about it? What has it done for you that you might not otherwise have, have had the opportunity to do if you hadn't done this? Yeah. So I, um, so my mind is a little bit different. Um, uh, it, it thrives on, um, being occupied with creative projects. So, um, on one end, it's a challenge, meaning um you know i have all these ideas but for me it kind of is the the oil that feeds the machine so um i do a lot of creative projects and i don't finish all of them and some of them go 90 percent, and then i never get to the end um or in, or in some cases i do all this work and i never play the game sure um, but it's kind of it's, it's not so much that i do it um to get something like to to really make like i do feel good doing it but it's almost a necessity for me to keep my machine running sure so this so this week it was a Battletech board and that really got me jazzed and, and I'm working on some other stuff with Battletech, but I kind of have to, it's almost like my, um, it's like my vice. Uh, I don't drink, I don't go to the bars, I don't do anything else. So this is what I do to keep the machine going. Sure. Um, so it does bring happiness. I do love the fact that people appreciate it. It does bring me down a notch sometimes when it gets more critique than, than what I was aiming for. Um, Trust. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of it's scary when you throw something out to people, and that's why I prefaced it by saying I'm not looking at saying that cattle didn't do a great job. You know, you throw something creative out there and hope that people really love it. And I, I think for the most part, this project we did. 
Oh no, I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. And I, I, I think maybe my responses on that thread, because <laughs> ask anybody who's talked to me for 10 minutes, just like I said, they all know I am an opinionated, you know, like I will just tell you, why are you doing this to this guy? Knock it off. You ain't helping anybody here by being, you know, over, you know, uh, overly criti critical, critical, that's the word. <laughs> uh, overly critical isn't going to help anybody. And it's not going to make anybody want to come back. You know, if they, if they put something out there and then you're just like, pop, pop, pop. what are you doing? Like, just say, hey, man, great. And, and so if I made you feel like there was a bigger furor than there was, I apologize. <laughs> No, they um the BattleTech community on Facebook was actually pretty good. Um, oh, sure, they, for the they, most part. Yeah, they pointed out some options for improvement, and uh, being a big boy, I was able to take some of those and implement some and change others. But at the end of the day, um, I think it's cool just being a part of a community, um, and you got to take the good with the bad because it's sure that you know when you have a thousand people or whatever, you're going to get you know different personalities, right? I so. think a lot of them they get overexcited and they jump on something. And then they're like, well, here's what I did. And I think this is just a random thought that if you were to take their idea and use it, that would be somewhat validating to them. And I think that somebody at somewhere is hoping, well, maybe if I say this, this will, and then I'll have helped. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I don't yeah. think it all comes from a bad place. I, I'm, I'm willing to give the benefit of the doubt as far as that goes. It's just once I see too much of it, I start to hit that, what are y'all doing? We just well, just say I say something a, nice, can't you? I had a member of the Facebook community. I don't know who it was. Reach out to me, and he wants me to make him some of those cards for his mechs that he has. Yeah. And, and I said to him, I said, "Yeah, I definitely will make some." And uh, just what kind of pilot do you want in it? And he's like, "Oh, I never thought about that. Let me get back to you." So, <laughs> um, so my intent is once I've got the template ironed out, I actually have a website that I run that's been running for about uh, five years now. And I, um, I'm going to make those files available to download via my website. So, um, what, what is that website? Um, so I run a, um, I don't know what to call it. I want to call it a business, but it's, it's a brand. Um, so it's called, uh, the game nexus. The website is, uh, www.intothegamenexus.com. And that website is a gaming journalistic site, I guess I could call it. So I write articles on, um, video games, tabletop games, you name it. But we have presence spread across YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook. Um, and so what I usually do is with my creation, I will um, make them available through the website as opposed to the Facebook community. Sure. Um, just because it's hard sometimes to bury it in Facebook and you never find it. So, yeah. So so a lot of the content and a lot of the stuff that I create, like the how to build your own table. Sure. I do an article on that right now that will be available on the website. See... And for somebody like me, who's, I'm, I'm fine at painting. I, I do okay. But like when it comes to ter terrain creation, I'm just kind of like, what are these supposed to do again? And so uh, I'm definitely going to be looking into that because I, I imagine because of everything else that you do, it's newbie friendly. And, you know, even a caveman like myself could do it. I try to, yeah. This is, this is my workshop. So I don't have a large amount of room to play with, um, but I do it all here in house, so. I guess Battletech specific, what I would like to, to say is um, just to reiterate that, um, focusing in on um, on some of the aesthetics of the universe. That's what drew me into the game this time around. Um, you know, I, I looked at it more as a very cool universe. Um, I'm playing Mech Warrior 5 on the Xbox right now. All right. So for me, I know I pop on my Top Gun soundtrack whenever I play the game. And <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm literally listening to Danger Zone while I'm playing Mech Warrior 5. Um, so, to the community out there, um, taking a step back and just looking at some of the cool parts of the, the game, um, the mechs and the, and the stuff like that, rather than the rules, um, you know, not to preach at community because, you know, obviously they've been doing it longer than me. Um, but that's some of the things as a new player I would put that focus on. So, no, it was good. I'm glad that I could come on to the show and just talk a little bit about Battletech and just what I do. And, yeah, that's what we love. We love to feature people. And, and to me, Battletech as, as a setting and as a, as a rule system is all good and I love it, but I really feel like it's the people that make this game great. And that's one of the things we do is when we travel around, we're meeting these people. And yeah. a lot of times you kind of forget that this game is around today because of people. 
and it stuck around through that big uh, gap uh, after Mech Warrior Dark Age tanked. It stuck around because of people like us, lifers, who are just like, I refuse. You, you can call this game dead when I'm dead and you pry it from my cold, dead fingers. Well, and I, I think that's a lost thing. Um, the, I think the game predates Warhammer, correct? Uh, that I couldn't tell you. I'm I. Everybody on this channel knows I am famously not a fan of Warhammer. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, and it's it's I, not the game itself. It's mainly just the company that I'm not a fan of. But so as insofar as how far back it goes, I couldn't tell you. I know I, BattleTech goes to 1984. Yeah, it's it's an OG. It's an OG tabletop game. Um, and so yeah, no, it's it's cool to be a part of this. So. Um, I'll look forward to, uh, to getting more involved with the community for sure. Um, but uh, I'll have those uh, cards that you put up on screen. Um, and I'll put them on my website. And um, I don't know what the future of it holds, whether I make them for people or whether I just showed what I did. Um, but uh, stay tuned, I guess. Right. We are you know, sure looking forward to having more of you in the community, more of your work. We love seeing that stuff. Perfect. Thanks, Talk, for having me. Thank you for being on, brother. We'll catch you soon. Okay, take care. Remember, you have to be a subscriber and leave a comment. Crowdfunding is when lots of people give you small amounts of money to help your passion project come to life.